Yesterday marked the first anniversary of this channel, so I spent all of yesterday finishing up a story I wrote and a production that will make you feel something. It is a story of two brothers. Very small parts of the story are true, and the names have not been changed. Subscribers, thank you, and please enjoy my gift to you. A Walk I Can't Forget Bye Brendan Dean I don't believe you. Noah tried to convince himself, yet his eyes reflected a child's anxiety. I smiled. You don't have to believe me, his face almost brightened. But that doesn't mean it didn't really happen. His frown returned. I was never really sure why he wanted me to tell him these ghost stories. He begged and begged for them, only to end up frightened and jumpy. The rain fell as a light stream thunder booming in the distance as wind shuffled through the trees. The walk home was delightfully long. I had always loved rainy days and would often find excuses to be out in them. Noah, my little brother who followed my every footstep, would himself always find an excuse to be by my side. But monsters ain't real, Brendan. He spoke in a half-hearted whisper. That's what mom says. It was almost a question timidity apparent in his voice. Noah sat down on an old stump, only to rise again as he realized the rain had gathered on its surface. He wiped at the back of his jeans, trying in vain to dry himself. He sighed and plopped back down. I sat next to him, though there was hardly enough room for us both. I placed the plastic bag on my lap and quickly checked to make sure the loaf of bread inside hadn't gotten wet. Mom would be pissed. Luckily, its sill was tight and intact. Sometimes, I sighed. Mom says things just to make you feel better. I shouldn't have said it, but part of me wanted to frighten him a little more. And I knew he loved this. He loved being scared. He loved hearing these stories. He looked up at me, squinting his blue eyes. Why would she do that? Noah sounded both offended and confused. So he'd stop being a wuss. I budged him with my shoulder. I'm not a wuss. He finally smiled back at me. I punched his arm and jumped away before he could hit me back. Once he ran after me, I ran ahead on the path. He didn't like that. No! Noah shouted behind me. There was real panic in his voice. Don't leave me! I couldn't help but feel a bit guilty. I slowed down and let him catch up. Noah had always panicked when he thought you were going to leave him behind. Don't leave me! He'd shout on the brink of tears, even if we were just around the corner. It's not like we made a game of leaving him. In fact, I have no idea where this deep fear of being alone came from. Each time he cried out like that, it pulled at my heart. Noah soon stood in front of me out of breath. Looking at him, I figured it was about time I got him home. I bet I can jump farther than you. Noah jumped and landed hard on a stick that was strewn on the path. It broke in two with a loud snap. Oh, we'll see. I teased him. He had been excited ever since I told him we'd jump the stream. It was a shortcut we rarely took, but my brother was the type of kid that loved to climb trees and skip rocks. Jumping a few stones across the stream would make his day, and I could already hear its babbling from here. Hey, Brendan? He suddenly stopped. Yeah? I turned to him. What do you want to be when you grow up? He asked so innocently. I... I wondered myself. I was a senior in high school then. I had had all of 12 full years of schooling to know that by now. But I didn't. I had no clue. I want to be an astronaut, I eventually said. It sounded so shallow, like I had pulled it out of the air. But if you had asked me 13 years ago what I wanted to be... That would have been my answer. Well, I want to be a drawer. Noah sounded optimistic. 
<laughs> hey, drawer, I couldn't help but giggle. You mean an artist? Yeah, but for games and stuff. He jumped onto another twig before smiling at me. The scar on his nose made my heart sink. It always did. I turned away. I didn't even know I had. One moment I had been facing him and the next I was staring at the path ahead with a stinging ache in my chest. The wind began to pick up, as did the rain. We better get going, Noah. I continued ahead, hearing his smaller footsteps follow suit. It wasn't long before we came upon the stream. Well, it wasn't a stream anymore. Though the rain had never picked up past a light drizzle, it must have been enough to flood the stream into something more daunting. The stepping stones were completely enveloped in racing, muddy water, save for one large one at the very edge of the opposite bank. Broken branches and limbs were strewn about and stuck in various places throughout its flow. I clutched the plastic bag firm in my hand as I realized we'd probably have to go around. That meant being out longer in the rain and probably worrying Mom sick. We can still jump it, Noah exclaimed. You must have noticed the worry on my face. No, I don't think that'd be very smart. That being said, I still thought about it. The water must have been waist high. I was sure the both of us could wade through it, let alone make the jump. Sounds like you're being the wuss now, Noah teased. Well, I thought for a moment. I imagined the two of us joking later at home about how I'd fallen in and gotten soaked. Okay, but climb on my back. If I bring you back covered in mud, mom's gonna kill me. Before I ever knelt down, my brother had jumped on my back and wrapped his arms around my neck. <laughs> Whoa there. I coughed a little, and he eased up on his grip. I stood slowly, making sure he held on tight. Then, I stepped in. The day had been a warm one, even with the rain falling and cooling things down. But when my legs sank into the viscous, watery mixture, it hit me with an ungodly chill. I fought through it, and soon everything waist down was submerged. The water rushed past, trying with all its might to pull me with it. I walked slowly, caution my primary focus. The stream itself wasn't very wide, but the dirty, cold water seemed to go on for miles. It's pretty scary up here, Noah muttered behind me. I couldn't help but laugh at his unexpected remark. Yeah, it was scary and cold, and there went a good pair of my jeans. Finally, I made it to the opposite bank. I stood only a foot away from the edge. Filling around with my feet, I noticed that there wasn't going to be any climbing up onto the bank. So I turned, preparing to let Noah jump off. As I turned, my body suddenly became lighter, and the grip I had on Noah's legs released. Like I was trying to catch a dropped glass, I shifted around, hands reaching out desperately. Noah floundered in the water beside me. The water tugged at him relentlessly, but something held on to him. Something in the water had a hold of my brother. Its angular appendage gripped his shirt, pointed claws impaling the cloth of his lifeline. Noah screamed, arms reaching out to me helplessly. And I reached toward him. The memories flooded me, the scar on the bridge of his nose, the guilt, the pain. When I had promised to watch him, when I had gotten distracted by something far less important, when he had wandered upstairs and ultimately fallen down them, when I thought he wasn't going to make it. Attacked by the flowing mud, I ran toward him. I ran with all the strength I had, which only made my fall harder. I picked myself up, not bothering to wipe my eyes of the fluid debris. My vision cleared in the matter of a few blinks, in time to see my brother dragged under the water with the creature that stole him. In time to see Noah one last time. All those years ago, after years of psychiatry, therapy, and being shunned by my own family, I have told the story of the creature that took my brother from me countless times to countless people. No one believes me, but it doesn't matter what took him or who trusts the memory that has haunted me for ages. What matters? What matters is that I lost him. It was my fault. He's gone forever. How could I have let myself cross that stream? 
How could I have let myself ruin my family's lives? And the memory of the creature, that claw that rose from the water and pulled him under, the tree branch that had washed downstream and snagged his shirt, all because I wanted to carry him across. <laughs>